We need your voice in education right now. And if you step up and begin to share something that matters to you, something that matters deeply and that you're passionate about, you're bound to hit a nerve that makes a difference in the way that we do things collectively as educators. Hey there, class kickers, and welcome to another edition of the Kicks in Class podcast, a show designed to help you, the educator, kick some class at home, in school, and in life. And today, I have a silly question for you. What do octogenarians, AI, and life all have in common? And no, this is not the beginning of a cheesy joke. Uh, well, I wanted to start out by talking about what everybody's talking about, which is chat GPT. And so what I've been doing is I've been asking it sign, uh, sort of uh, crazy questions about different things in life. And one of the things that I asked um, was something I stumbled across in a book, which is what is the most common thing that octogenarians, those that are over 80 years old, uh, would look back on life and say, maybe I missed it, maybe I do more of, maybe I do less of. And so it was interesting as I asked that uh, chatbot that question multiple times, it kept spitting out different studies and places where people had asked, but the answers were always the same. And there are things that, I, what I would say from my whole life, I've always said, um, it's really awesome to make mistakes on your own because you learn from them. But how much better would it be if we didn't have to make the mistake in the first place because we could learn from somebody else? And I think that's the difference between knowledge and wisdom, right? So you can acquire <laughs> knowledge from anybody, from your own mistakes or from anybody else's, but wisdom would be what you do with it and where you get it from. You know, I think it's funny that when I was younger, I used to say this all the time, like, oh, I'm that kid who had to make my own mistakes. And now I'm like, that was the dumbest thing in the world to brag about because that just lacks wisdom, right? And so I'm going to go ahead and read off this list. But if you're using Chad GBT, this would be, I'm really curious if you want to drop this down in the comments, if you're watching on YouTube, if you're listening, go ahead, find this uh, episode on YouTube, and then tell me what are you asking this chat bot and what interesting kind of information are you getting from it? So I'm going to go ahead and grab this list. And uh, here's one of the first things it says, uh, not spending enough time with family and friends. And so one of the reasons why I started this very podcast was this idea that I wanted to make sure that I was fully present for those that mattered to me because part of teaching, we take on this identity that says you got to be grading all these papers and planning and be in your classroom and doing all these things on the weekend and in the evening. And then you don't get that time with the people that matter most to you. And at the end of your life, you're not going to look back and say, I wish I spent more time in my classroom. You're going to say, I wish I spent more time with my kids, my spouse, you know, uh, my grandkids, even your dog, right? Um, so that was one, and I, it didn't shock me, but let's learn from it, right? How can you do something this weekend, this week, this evening, whenever you're listening or watching this, that honors that goal so that when you get to when you're 80, you're not regretting it, right? So uh, the next one was not taking more risks, and it's interesting as teachers, how many times we uh, talk to kids about getting, you know, getting the assignment right, getting the quiz, a good grade, getting good grades, right, doing the right thing. But do we talk to them about the value of risks? Do we talk to them about the value of saying, hey, I'm going to try something new. I want to step out of my comfort zone. And, and that to me is going back to this point that if we're talking to kids about matters of character matters of perseverance, matters of life, then we're actually doing them a service because we view them as a, a person who's going to live beyond their time in our class, our school, um, school in general. And so how do we do that? And that if we aren't modeling taking more risks ourselves, so I don't know if this is for you, you want to start a side business, you want to get out and um, try something new, maybe take up MMA fighting. I don't know. It's just something about that makes me feel like it would help me get in shape um, as long as I didn't get my face busted in. And so uh, maybe, I don't know what it is. Maybe you want to start an art gallery. Maybe you want to start a podcast or a YouTube channel or start helping people learn the guitar. I don't know what it is, but take a risk and that might energy energize you and trickle over into your, your class. So uh, that's the second one. The third one was not wasting too much time. Oh, oh this one. This is the one right here on trivial matters instead of pursuing meaningful activities. Dude, I could let this thing just sit and marinate for like 10 minutes. Um, 
and and it's something that I'm working on right now. I don't have the exact quote handy, but Ben Hogan, the famous golfer, once said, the thing that sets apart uh, the average golfer from the professional is that the average golfer uh, doesn't really know what they should be doing at any given time. So, you know, you can interpret that in the world of golf that you, you don't realize that should be, you should be focusing on only that one shot. You should be practicing only your short game. You should be letting go, whatever that might be. And, and to me, this is the thing that I think plagues at least public education and those teachers that have been in it any length of time. And that is that they begin to worry about trivial matters and they begin to forget about the main thing. And I would say that the main thing in education that, and that we need to focus on is the fact that children are human beings, that we are taking up a third of their day, a third of their life at this point. And are we focusing on the fact that they are a human beings with a future, that they go home to a family, that they at some, some point in their lives are going to figure out what they want and they're going to use us as a model for good or for ill. And so if we focus on that idea that kids have this inherent quality to them and not just as people to, to do the work that we put before them, to consume our content, to pass our class, and to be successful the next year, then I think we're, we're learning from this octogenarian mindset that uh, the trivial things all of those policies, all those emails, all of those uh, notes and uh, minutes and, you know, things, they don't matter if they don't touch the life of a child at the point where they need it, which is the fact that they're a human being first. Oh, man, I could go a whole upside on that one. Probably will in the future. So let's move on to number four, not saving earlier, investing more in your future. And I want to talk about this as finances, right? Like teachers sometimes talk about this thing. We, we, we don't get paid enough. I don't earn enough. And as much as, as that's probably true in almost all states, the fact of the matter is um, you are the only one who can control how you invest in yourself and how you invest in your financial well-being and future. And I get it that the, what you get paid and how much you have to work and all that matters, but it doesn't mean that you can't find a passion project, a side project, something, some other way, or alter the way that you live. And I'm not putting this all on the teacher here. The point is, this isn't just about money. This is about how you view yourself and invest in yourself. You can complain about the PD that your school offers. It's not great. But are you going out and finding professional development or professional learning networks that actually serve you, that actually help you? Um, there's a guy, you can look him up on Twitter, uh, Matthew uh, X Joseph or X Factor EDU. And he started these professional learning networks um, where there's a meet on every Friday at 830 and it, it's open. You go in and there's a topic and you talk about it. And I've gotten so much more from meeting them just a couple months ago and engaging in that than I have for a lot of the, a lot of things. But I took the opportunity to invest in my own future, my own profession and my own self. And that brought a spark about in my own life. And so uh, I just would encourage you to take the reins as the one who this is all going to come back to. This is up to you. How much of your life are you going to give away the control of to somebody else? And um, I hope it's not much, if any, at all. So the last one I am going to uh, talk about here is not expressing yourself more honestly and authentically. Every one of us knows somebody who says, sorry, not sorry, hashtags that. And, and you know what? There's a difference between being honest, being yourself and being rude. And so, uh, don't, don't use being, um, rude as an excuse to say, well, I'm just being honest. I'm just being myself because you can do both or you can do those things without being rude. And, uh, but the fact of the matter remains that so many people just hedge back and they hold themselves back. They don't express themselves because they don't know if, uh, that's going to be validated. Well, we need your voice in education right now. Your family needs your voice. Your friends need your voice. Your community need your voice. And if you step up and begin to share 
something that matters to you, something that matters deeply and that you're passionate about, you are bound to hit a nerve. Now, you may not have the solution, but you're bound to hit a nerve that makes a difference in the way that we do things collectively as educators. You need to speak up and get that out there authentically, and, and you, you'll be less frustrated because of it. So uh, that's kind of brings me maybe to the end of the things that I would share here that I learned from 80 year olds, octogenarians is a cool word. I think that's my goal for the year. Use that more in conversation. I don't see where that's going to be valuable, but it might be fun to try to fit it in. And I'm going to try to get that in uh, today. But the point that I want to make is uh, if you're going to engage with AI and again, don't, don't lock it down, man, it can help you. And this is just one way that I pulled information from an AI chat GPT, what everybody's talking about to find out how my life could be better if I learned from those who made mistakes who are older than me and the wisdom that they gained from life. And that is gonna allow everybody to kick some class. So there you go, class kickers. This is uh, all I've got for this episode. If you are learning things from chat GPT or other forms of AI, please drop that down in the comments. I would love to hear what you're learning, what you're asking, what you're finding out and how we can use this creatively. That's gonna be another episode to engage kids in something that is just good old fashioned class kicking. Have a great day. I'll see you in the next one.